All right, um, hello and welcome to Evolution. Um, and specifically today, we're gonna to talk about natural selection. Um, on the screen here, I have um, Charles Darwin who will- Yeah, I'm back from the day. <laughs> yeah, he'll chime in here and there. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So what is evolution and the theory of evolution? So evolution is the process of change over time. And the theory of evolution was created by Mr. Charles Darwin, who we have um, also on the screen here, um, known as, and he's known as the father of evolution. He stated that evolution happens by natural selection, which we're gonna get into here. So natural selection essentially states that organisms that are best adapted to their environments survive and reproduce more than others. This can closely be related to the term survival of the fittest, which means that it's not the strongest or most intelligent species that survives, but the one that is most responsive to change. And natural selection has five stages, um, and it can be remembered through the acronym VISTA. V is for variation. Each individual has a unique combination of inherited traits. More variation than a species is more likelihood that they will survive. I is for inheritance. When organisms reproduce, they pass on their DNA to their offspring. S is for selection. Um, individuals compete for limited resources and, oh, sorry. Um, and the more successful they are means that there is a better chance of um, survival um, and then reproduction and passing on their genes to, or passing on their DNA to um, future generations. T is for time. Through generations, advantageous traits help some individuals survive and reproduce. And A is for adaptation. So um, a population that is better suited to some aspects of the environment than it was before, um, essentially adapting to their environment. So individuals with stronger, better adaptations um, have more likelihood of survival. Now let's take a look at a classic example, Darwin's finches. Um, so in September of 1835, Charles Darwin went to the Galapagos Islands, and I'm sure that he'll tell you all about that in a moment. Um, oh, so yes, they were amazing. Um, yeah. I would highly recommend them. Uh, I found the finches there, obviously. Uh -huh. I love finches. They're beautiful. Um, and, you know, the scenery is just stunning. I would recommend it uh, if you have a chance to go. Uh, I left a review on TripAdvisor right when I resurrected, and I just, beautiful, beautiful natural landscape. So. Okay, there you have it. So um, Charles Darwin liked the Galapagos Islands and he did discover something very important there. Uh, so he saw there were multiple types of finches there. They were all almost exactly identical, but they had a key difference, which was that their beaks were different sizes. Some were longer and some were shorter. Now, if we take a look at natural selection and evolution, we can see that they're actually responsible for this. So Finches um, get their food source from trees. They like little seeds that are kind of buried in trees. But during drought years, um, these plants and trees cannot produce the same amount of food and seeds for the finches. So because of this, the only finches, only finches with the longer beak survived as they were the only ones able to reach the seeds. As a result, they pass down the trait for longer beak lengths to future generations. And so during drought years, um, the finches were observed to have longer average beak sizes. And here we can kind of see that here in the chart, um, whereas during dry years, the beak depth increased. So finches that were better adapted to their environments had a better chance of surviving and passing their genes on to future generations. Okay. Now let's take a look at behavioral versus structural adaptations. The finches are an example of a structural adaptation, but behavioral adaptations are characteristics of an organism that helps them survive. So an example of this includes the elk because the elk has a great sense of smell, uh, which helps them find food as well as sense danger um, and pr to protect them and the ability to detect movements near them. Now, this is not a structural adaptation because there's nothing physical about these traits that help them survive. It's just that um, these are behavioral characteristics. Now, structural adaptations, like I just said, are physical features of an organism that help them survive. So for an example, um, structural adaptations of a bear include sharp curved claws for climbing, um, long tongues for obtaining food, 
and giant bodies that are adapted for running. And these are all um, physical, structural adaptations. Um, there's nothing inherently um, behavioral about them. And yeah, that was the natural selection part of evolution. And um, Charles Darwin, do you have anything to say before we say goodbye? Uh, beautifully put, well said, Eva. I couldn't yeah. have said, oh, maybe I could have said it better myself, but you know, I'm me. So uh, that was fantastic, well done. Well thank done. you, thank you. All right, and then we'll see you next time.